Annyeonghaseyo. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Emi Yoshikawa, and I'm from Ripple. First of all, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, it's such an honor to be invited to this great conference. And I'm particularly interest, uh, very excited to be in Korea, not only because uh, I really love the Korean culture and people and the food, but also because over the past year, uh, we are seeing a growing interest in Ripple among Korean people. Um, and it's not just a speculative interest, but we are seeing more and more genuine interest in what we do and what we are trying to achieve. So we feel a very warm support from Korean people, and also uh, we are kind of seeing a sense of community here. Um, so I'm very, very excited to be here. But before I start, I want to do some reality check. Uh, I want to ask how many of you here in the audience actually have heard of Ripple before? Can I show? Oh, that's great. Like, probably majority of you already know about Ripple. But I bet probably most of you um, don't have a clear understanding of the difference between Ripple as a company and XRP as a digital currency. And those are two different things. So today, in my talk, I'm mostly focused on uh, talking about Ripple as a company and how we use uh, a leveraged blockchain technology, including XRP, to really transform global payments. So first of all, Ripple is a real company <laughs> based in San Francisco. Uh, we were founded in 2012, so we've been around for more than six years, uh, five to six years or so. Uh, so we are really one of the pioneers in this space, uh, and we are one of the first company who decided to leverage blockchain technology to enterprise application. Uh, especially financial services. Today we have eight offices around the world uh, with more than 200 employees around the world. In Asia, we have an office in Tokyo. Uh, it's a joint venture with SBI Group in Japan and also Singapore office and also Mumbai office in India as well. So Ripple basically develops and provides enterprise solution to financial services companies, banks and payment providers to really help improve uh, global payments. So our vision is to realize the internet of value. Uh, what we mean by internet of value is uh, to re basically re enable the world to move money just like information does today. Today, because of the internet, now I can send the data or information to anybody around the world instantaneously, almost for free. But when it comes to money, particularly cross-border payments, it's still not the case. It's such a frustrating and inefficient process. And it's creating a lot of friction in the global trade economy, and it really has become a huge obstacle in realizing true globalization. So Ripple utilized blockchain to solve this problem. But why payments? Actually, in the early days of the company, we actually explored many different use cases, including trade finance, securities, and so on. But we quickly realized all of these use cases, blockchain use cases, really stem from payments because they all involve transactions. So unless you really solve the problems associated with payments, none of these use cases will be very truly useful. So we decided to really 100% focus on payments use case early on. So now uh, let's look into the payments use case a little bit more closely. Probably you, many of you probably have experience sending money from Korea to another country, and it's such a frustrating experience, as you would agree with me. Uh, it typically takes three to five days to settle, and also it's very expensive. If you use the banks, it could cost like $30 to $40, and there is no visibility into the process, um, because once you send the payments, you don't know when it arrives uh, to your recipients, and it often could fail. But unless you call up your bank, you don't know where the money, money is stuck. So it has a lot of problem. But why is that? It's because the payments today are processed on a very old antiquated infrastructure that was developed like 40 to 50 years ago, even before the internet was um, developed. So Ripple basically tries to 
utilize the power of blockchain technology to really solve all of these problems. Now, using Ripple's technology, we enable coordinated synchronized transaction. So now, originating bank and beneficiary bank can talk to each other, get connected with each other in a single step in a real-time manner. And as a result, now the transaction can be finished in just a matter of three to four seconds, and the cost can be reduced, and also it minimizes settlement risk because the transaction happens in real time, and also gives a transparency into the uh, payment status. Today, uh, Ripple works with more than 100 financial institutions around the world, and our Ripple network is uh, expanding day to day on a daily basis. And I'm very excited to um, share with you, uh, several weeks ago, we announced our partnership with CoinOne Transfer. Uh, CoinOne Transfer is a payment subsidiary of uh, CoinOne uh, as a cryptocurrency exchange. And now they are use, going to use uh, Ripple's technology to provide uh, better real-time uh, retail remittance services. So now, uh, let's go a little bit deeper into this and then talk about how Ripple actually enables the uh, Internet of Value, which is our vision. Let's step back a little bit and look at the payments industry today. As you can see, today there are hundreds of thousands of payment networks out there. Like banks in each country have their own network, right? And blockchain itself is also another kind of a payment network. And mobile money like uh, Alipay, online wallets like uh, PayPal. Um, the problem is these networks don't talk to each other, don't communicate with each other because they have their own language and protocol for data exchange and uh, value exchange. But this is really creating the friction. And it's very unrealistic to assume that everybody on the earth will join the same network. That's something that early Bitcoiners kind of envisioned the early days. It's kind of utopian way of thinking, but it's very, very um, unrealistic to assume that the whole world will agree to the same network. So we will continue to see multiple, numerous payment networks coexist for you know, different purposes. So what's more important for us is to really interoperate these different networks so that they can talk to each other and communicate with each other. And it's not just uh, interoperability between uh, blockchain network, but it's more with anything of value, including uh, fiat currencies or any other, <laughs> anything, any assets of value. So we are actually talking about really the much broader thing, the interoperability of value. And this is exactly what happened with the internet, if you think about this. Before the internet, there were so many different data networks out there, like AOL, like CompuServe, and the problem at that time, again, was they don't, they don't talk to each other. So if I wanted to send data or information to my friend, I had to make sure my friend is also on the same data network. But the internet changed everything. Basically, the internet commoditized the reach because now different networks, different data networks, are able to talk to each other. And we thought maybe we can apply the same concept to the, wor the world of value. And that's what we came up as uh, interledger. This is a common protocol or common language for connecting different payment networks or ledgers. The Ripple's researchers initially came up with this idea several years ago. And at that time, we decided to carefully research the internet architecture because it was uh, such a successful use case. So this is the internet architecture. As you can see, it consists of four different layers. The bottom layer is data network layer, which can be uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. On top of that is internet network layer, which is IP, internet protocol. That's a common protocol for exchange data between different networks. And then transport layer and application layer. And because of IP, now any data, you know, data on the Basically, application developers don't have to worry about which data networks the user is on because we know, because of IP, the data can interoperate across different networks. And this hourglass uh, shape basically represents uh, how complex each layer is. And as you can see, IP, the internet network layer, is designed to be very simple and uh, very easy to use. 
And because of the simplicity, the IP was very successful and quickly disseminated to the world and is now a global standard for data interoperability. So we decided to apply the same architecture to the world of Valley. So this is an interledger architecture. Again, there are four different layers. Uh, the bottom layer is ledger or payment network. Could be bank network or mobile money network or blockchain. And then interledger layer sits on top of it, which is IOP or interledger protocol. And then transport and application layer. Again, IOP, we designed it in a way it's very, very simple. So it can be adapted by many organizations and people. So this interledger project is not repos proprietary project or technology. It is an open source protocol. It is an official community group um, registered as part of a worldwide web consortium, which basically creates a standard for the internet. And today, we have more than 275 contributors participating in the effort to standardize this interledger, um, including banks, central banks, and technology companies. So we are really um, working to make sure that this technology is well known across the countries. And I hope uh, uh, many of you here or Korean companies uh, also participate in this effort so that we can together make this uh, um, global standard. So now I want to discuss a little bit uh, how we actually use this technology to come up with the solutions for financial institutions. We have a couple of major project, products right now. Uh, one of them is called XCurrent. This product basically solves the two main problems that payments has. One is a messaging problem, and second is settlement problem. As you might remember in the previous slide, today, if you use Swift, it's a very one-directional sequential process. Message can be only sent in one direction, but not bidirectional. Our product allows for bidirectional messaging. So in a sense, you can think of Swift messaging as a kind of snail mail, whereas our bidirectional messaging is more like email or messenger app, like Kakao and stuff. And then what's also important, and more important, is the atomic settlement. This is where interledger technology comes in. So banks still maintain their own bank ledgers, but now because of the common language, interledger, they can basically uh, settle with each other real time with a high certainty. And it's available 24, seven hours a day, uh, seven days a day. And now uh, we have another product called XRapid, which solves a very different problem. It solves a problem associated with liquidity. Today, if a financial institution in one country wanted to send money to another financial institution in another country, they typically have to have a liquidity relationship. And typically, they have to set up a Nostra account in another country and have to pre-fund money in the local currency. But this whole process of pre-funding is a very inefficient, very expensive process. And nowadays, because of the compliance requirements tightening up, particularly in emerging markets, uh, banks want to stay away from this process of pre-funding. And digital asset really solves this problem because they can basically convert fiat currency to digital asset and then digital asset to another fiat, uh, fiat currencies uh, on the fly, payment per payment. In this case, uh, if you wanted to send money from US to Mexico, US dollar can get converted to X, uh, XRP and then XRP moves across the open ledger and then arrives at another exchange in Mexico and it gets converted to Mexican peso. And so basically here, XRP plays the role of a bridge currency between fiat currencies. And this end-to-end -end process is much, much shorter than the, what it takes uh, today. So why XRP? You know, there are so many cryptocurrencies out there. Uh, according to some data statistics, there are 1,500 cryptocurrencies out there. But why Ripple decided to use XRP? Because we believe XRP has the best properties for the payment use case. It doesn't mean that XRP is good for everything. Different cryptocurrencies are designed to address different use cases. And we believe XRP is the best, has the best properties to address payment use case. And when we talk about payments, we think there are three uh, criteria that are particularly important to consider. One is the settlement speed. 
Uh, XRP allows for settlement in just a matter of four seconds. And also low transaction cost is also a very important criteria. And also scalability. Today, XRP can process up to 1,500 transactions per second. And using the off-chain uh, payment channel functions, uh, basic scalability is unlimited. And in addition to these technical capabilities, we also believe sustainability element is very important. As everybody knows, Bitcoin is a very expensive mining process, consumes a lot of energy. Today, Bitcoin is said to consume as much as Ireland as a country consumes in a given year. XRP doesn't use mining process. We use a very special uh, consensus algorithm, which use a very negligible energy consumption. So we believe when we think about the future of money, it's very important to not only consider technical properties, but also how sustainable it is on the, over the longer term time horizon. So now I want to spend the last few minutes talking about real life case studies that is really happening in Asia. Last year, we established a payment, real time payments uh, channel between Japan and Thailand by working with SBI Remit, which is the largest remittance company in Japan, and Siam Commercial Bank in Thailand. As you probably know, in Japan, we have a lot of uh, uh, migrant workers um, coming from Asia, and they have the need to send money back home to support their family in their home country. They rely on the money to be sent by the worker working in Japan. But if they use the banks, the fees are very expensive. $30, $40 means a lot to the family living in their home country. And also it takes a lot of time, three to five days. And then it could often fail as well. If it fails, it really directly impacts the lives of uh, families living in Thailand. So Siam Commercial Bank and SBI Remit decided to create a completely improved uh, remittance services using Ripple's technology. Now they could offer uh, much lower cost fees and also real-time settlement. Just, it's done in just a matter of several seconds. And also gives a full visibility into the payment status as well. And some of you might wonder, well, if the transaction fees are lowered, isn't that a bad thing for financial institutions? It's not necessarily the case. Because the fees, once the fees goes down, then more new users want to join this service and also existing users also want to send more money more frequently because now fees are much lower and it's really better for their family back home as well. So it's really a win-win kind of a case uh, for not only users but also financial institutions. Another example that I want to talk a little bit is a, a Japan Bank Consortium. Our joint venture partner, uh, SBI Holdings in Japan, and Ripple's uh, JV created a bank consortium where more than 50 Japanese banks participate in. And what we are doing here is to establish a completely new next generation payment system. Um, today, we have in Japan, there is a system called Zengin system that interconnects different banks in Japan and it has a lot of limitations. It's a basically centralized payment system. Operating hours are limited, and also it's very expensive. It costs several dollars just for um, domestic payments. And also for cross-border payments, uh, banks use uh, SWIFT. And those are two separate processes right now. But using Ripple's technology, we can bring both domestic and cross-border payments into a unified platform. And this is called uh, RC Crowd, uh, being developed by the consortium. And because of this unified platform, now like even, and it's hosted on the cloud, and even smaller uh, regional banks can easily get onboarded into this new platform. And it's 24 hours, seven days available. And also it's a decentralized, so you don't have to rely on the centralized party. And you can basically decide how much uh, fees that you want to charge as well. And right now, the banks are building a new payments application on top of this uh, payments platform called MoneyTap, which will be released to the end users later this year. So we are very, very excited about this progress. So lastly, um, I want to emphasize, emphasize again that Ripple is very, very excited about this uh, concept of internet of value. 
And internet of value is not just about reducing cost. It's more about creating new opportunities and giving access to more people to um, financial, open financial services. And just like internet created a whole new um, business models, we believe this uh, internet of value can create a whole new set of uh, new opportunities that we can probably even imagine today. But in order to make this happen, single company like Ripple cannot do this ha make it happen just ourselves. We have to work with governments, companies, banks around the world to together make this uh, possible and a reality. So we are very, very excited to work with many of the Korean financial institutions, payment companies, and other companies to really together realize the world of the Internet of Value. Thank you so much. 감사합니다.